Please rise for the gospel. The gospel comes from St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they are worse sinners than all other Galileans? No. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Are those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in, a, in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it in. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Boys, would you like to come up for our children's message? Good morning. So it's great. 
very nice to see you this morning. Grace and peace to you from God who separates the waters from the waters, and Jesus from whom flows the living water of life, and the Spirit who is poured out upon the thirsty land. Amen. So this message comes to you from the beginning part of Isaiah 55, uh, 1. It's a long verse, um, but the first part is, Ho, everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. So first thing to know about me is that I like to learn things. And the second thing to know is I wonder about things. I'm a daydreamer. Um, so... Last night I started looking up which rivers were your three rivers at Longview. Everything is named three rivers. So um, just to let you know, that is not an easy task. The first attempt was I tried to Google three rivers of Longview, Washington, and I got one river. I didn't think that was very good. And then I tried what are the three rivers of Longview, Washington, and I got all the things that are named three rivers in Longview, Washington, <laughs> except the names of the three rivers. So I got the mall, I got real estate, I got writing a movie theater, I mean, it was, it was frustrating. I better stuff. And then now I was committed, like I was going to find out the names of the three rivers in Longview, Washington. So then I tried, <clears throat> Then I tried what rivers touched Longview, Washington, and I got two rivers. So I was just like, okay. <laughs> and finally I got clever, and like Google and I, we became one. And I said, where can I go fishing in Longview, Washington? And lo and behold, they named three places. So please tell me if this is right, because I don't know if Google knows anything at this point. The Calus River and Columbia River, too, and then the other one is Kelvin? Yes. How do you say it? Kelvin. Kelvin. It's in Kelso. I found him. Okay. Oh, that's why. <laughs> it was very specific. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm, that just took me down. Okay, anyway. Well, trying to find the three rivers became an incredible <laughs> diving board that I jumped off of into very deep waters, <laughs> which wasn't really about sermon writing at that point. So, this became a different message than when I started. Um, but this happens often, right? You take some scripture, <laughs> and scripture's like a diamond. I'm, I'm sure you've heard this. And it has lots of facets. And as you turn it, the, the light can shine through different parts of it. It also can cut glass. And so there's some element of being aware that scripture can be used for good and to uplift. It can also be used for hurt and for harm. It can be used to bring people in or to leave people out. And so there's lots of ways that we look at scripture. But in this case, the diamonds shifted and my sermon got changed. The other thing to think about with scripture is that we look at scripture through different lenses. Those of us who live near water are going to think of, um, we're going to hear this verse differently come to the waters. We can just walk outside and go to the waters. You know, versus someone who really who lives in a, in a more barren land where water is hard to find. And so we got to think about that. And also, as, as Lutherans, we are going to look for the grace and the love. And, you know, it's just a different lens that we wear. That's called hermeneutics. It's a great seminary term. It's one of my favorites. Anyway, as I was <coughs> swimming in very deep water at this point, um, trying to find the three rivers, I did end up finding uh, lots of information about the Columbia River. I learned facts like it's the largest river flowing into the Pacific Ocean from North America. I learned that it started in British Columbia. I don't even know why I don't know this. Um, I learned it's 1,240 miles long. And I'm just going to tell you, I am smarter today than I was yesterday. <laughs> so, that's <laughs> Right? <laughs> so as I swirled in the deep waters of non-sermon writing, I floated into a new term. And that new term is, is a noun, confluence. And confluence means where two rivers meet. 
Um, it's a lovely term. It's, it's a term used for the coming together of the Cowlitz and the Columbia River. And those two rivers and that moment that happens here in Longview is overshadowing a lot of what I, my Google search. So today when I hear the words, oh, everyone who thirsts come to the waters, I'm hearing that a little differently than I did yesterday. <laughs> what I'm hearing today is, come to the waters, everyone who thirsts, come where the water flows and where the two rivers meet. Water plays such an important part in our Christian identity. Our baptisms bring us to the waters of new life. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. The confluence is our old life coming into our new life. Now Martin Luther, in the small catechism, and I'll tell you nothing about me. We're all going in the small catechism. <laughs> Just let you know. Uh, and, and our faith is based on this little book that we, that a lot of our, our thoughts and ideas come from a very small book, but uh, I know many of you have been schooled in it, but we're going to remember it. So one of the things that Martin Luther writes about baptism is, it's not the water that does it, but the word of God, which is writ and alongside the water, and faith, which trusts this word of God in the water. For without the word of God, the water is plain water and not a baptism. Mm -hmm. But with the word of God, it is a baptism. And that is a grace-filled water of life and a bath, a bath of the new spirit, of the of new birth in the Holy Spirit. That is the new birth of the Holy Spirit. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And I wonder who it is that doesn't thirst for God. Who is it that doesn't thirst, period? We need water to drink, and there are so many places that do not have clean water. And we've seen in the United States, in California, in Nevada, we have seen the water go down more and more every day. The water is mentioned in the Bible 707 times. And just for comparison, the word love is mentioned 731 times. These are high words that are used. Water is a very important biblical uh, concept. And it's, it's as important in the Bible as it is for us today. It's used in the Bible to define land boundaries and to be offered to someone as a way of welcome. Is that not still the way it is today? A full glass of water when you walk in the door. Living water is used to teach us who Jesus is and to whom the Spirit is as it pours out, it pours out upon us. And then you back in life. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Mm -hmm. And water is a part of creation, a part of Jesus' baptism, and a part of ours. And one of Jesus' last words on the cross <laughs> was, I thirst. As those of us who live in the Pacific Northwest, we understand water in a different way because it's abundant in our life. We see it every day. It's, it has a flow and abundance and, and we have an understanding of it. The confluence of rivers here in Longview, we are, we're near, we have the confluence here in Longview, we have the ocean, we have Puget Sound. There are streams and waterfalls and lakes and ponds and puddles. <laughs> Plus all the rain, don't forget all the rain. We see water all the time. And it's of no fear to us, because we always know that we can find more. So when we hear the words, I thirst, it's a little bit different than someone who really thirsts for water. But we do understand water in a different way when we have those wildfires burning, then we pray. 
yet we thirst. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. We thirst for Jesus. We thirst for the living water of life. We're drawn to the water, and we want it to wash away our sins. And Jesus died to save you for this to happen. And you have been baptized into the kingdom of God, and if you have not been baptized and want to learn more about what these waters do, please come and talk to me. Water is a simple element. It's just as simple as wine and bread, and, and it's the simple elements that God uses to be at the root of our faith. These are our sacraments. They're wholly important to us. And where there's a confluence of the river before, there's a river before, and there's a river after. And it's where those sins swirl and then get washed away. And in the resurrection, Jesus promises that new life, the eternal life. And all that starts now. Everyone who thirsts, come to the water. Come to the rivers of life. And who doesn't thirst for God? So I encourage you today to go and touch water. Go ponder where the rivers meet. And see the scripture that is in the water. See the creation that is there. The, the miracle of waters that we get to see flow abundantly in our lives. But our faith can be that dry and thirsty lake. Sometimes. So everyone who thirsts coming back to the waters. So the confluence where the two rivers meet. It's where our old life and our new life come together in Christ. Come all who are thirsty for the love of Come to the waters. Come and be back. Come and learn how the water washes away the sins. Come. Who Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray and we speak the words.